Hello YouTube friends, I'm back on my loom again. I've been thinking about this little project for a while. It's supposed to be a throw, but I've taken it about as wide as I think I want to, considering how much yarn I have. I've used three yarns, and I want to try to do a plaid. I've changed my mind so many times on this. You may recognize this in the middle here, this broadband of fuzzy pink, deep pink. And then I've got some very deep green, dark, dark forest green. And then I've got kind of a crinkly off-white. I can't tell you what the pink is because it came to me with no labels. It's orphan yarn. <laughs> and I can't tell you what this off-white is either because it also did not have a label. Um, I can tell you the green. This comes from Iceland, is that? No, I, yeah, Iceland, Iceland. And it's lopy yarn. Of course, they would put the sticker right on top of the label, but when I looked underneath, it said lopy. I've never heard of lopy, the original lopy. Um, and this is wool. I'm sure that the off-white is acrylic, and I really, I'm pretty sure this is some kind of a fuzzy acrylic, although it has the feel of wool, so I just don't know, but I don't think it is. Um, okay, oh, and I double warped this because it's so thin and that gave me more headaches than I even want to tell you. It's in other words it's 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 two strands of this for every one of everything else. Oh, we'll see how that how that warps up. Um, but I've got it I've got it stretched. <laughs> okay. This once again it's going all the way to that little peg on the end. And this time to keep it from popping off the top as I had trouble before, I took a ponytail. Um, and put it on the top, a little stretchy. And I think that that is a good idea. All right, um, after Adam helps me to wind this up, because I think I'm gonna need help, then I'll show you, well, I can maybe show you real quick. This over here is the same as this yarn, but I showed you how I chain plied it on my spinning wheel, and so it's triple ply, it's bulky, okay? And the white over that creamy white is not the same as this creamy white. It's all, that's my hand spun wool that I've been carding and stuff. So I really, I want to use it and see how it does. And then I've got some black. Um, actually, I've got some other dark green. Oh, hang on, let me get that. I think, I don't want to use the black. I'm going to use the green because I use the green here. I know it looks like black, but it's actually dark green. All right, I think I had forgotten about this yarn that came, the Orphan Yarn from Massachusetts um, when I showed it to you last time. I'm not sure. But this is Canadian pure wool, Briggs and Little Woolen Mills, two ply. It's a nice tight ply. I probably should have used it on my warp, but I didn't realize I had it till I was already well warped up. So um, I'm going to use this with uh, those two over there, the off white and the pink, in my weft, and we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to try to keep this. Um, plaid pattern because I'd love to try to do a plaid. Hi friends, now this is just a short little clip to show you a fascinating thing. I'm working on this warp of this throw and I'm using this deep pink yarn that I assumed was acrylic. And I came upon a test on a Facebook yarn group with a link to a blogger who had a bleach test that you can use to determine what kind of yarn you have if you have some thrift store yarn that without a label. And you put it in straight bleach. Okay, not color fast bleach, but actual bleach. You put little pieces of the yarn, and I put little pieces of this pink yarn. Here it is, right here. I don't know why I assumed it was acrylic. It just has that store-bought look. I don't know. It doesn't look like that, you know, the wool stuff you get from Germany or Ireland or something. And so I put it in the straight bleach, and if it bubbles, which this is just bubbling away, that means that it contains animal proteins. And, um, and I think it's the protein fibers that are dissolving here. So that means it's either alpaca or mohair or uh, wool, those kind of things. The, the scratchiness level of it tells me it's wool. It just is kind of strange looking for a wool. Acrylic will do absolutely nothing. Cotton yarn will bleach, but not dissolve. But animal 
yarn, uh, yarn that's made with animal products, mm -hmm. will dis actually dissolve away. If, it, if they do partially, if they bubble but don't totally dissolve, that means you've got a blend, acrylic wool blend or something like that. So you're supposed to leave it for 30 minutes. This has only been in there for like five minutes, maybe. So I'm going to wait and see what it does, and I'll let you know. Well, this is just fascinating. There is that dark pink yarn. I've got a card behind it so you can see it. It, um, The bleach burned off all the fuzziness on the outside, so that must have been an animal, um, animal product. And it left just the core thread, which must be... I don't know if it's acrylic, though, because it also bleached it, so it might be cotton. Isn't that interesting? If it had been acrylic, it would have left it just its base color. Let me show you again the yarn I was starting with. I started with this, and I put it in bleach, and it ended up with that. Isn't that fascinating? All right, well, use the bleach test if you are about to start a project and you think you've got acrylic and you might have wool and you need to... This is something I'd like to sell, so I really want to know the most delicate fiber in there is wool, and that's going to dictate what the washing instructions are when I sell it. Um, and that can be really important to know. You can blend fibers as long as you know what you're doing um, and you know what you've got. Okay, we got it all wound up. The warp's wound up. Um, this pink, I was informed by my husband and my daughter, this is not hot pink, this is purple, perhaps even mauve, whatever. Um, it really bunches up and grabs onto itself. And as we discovered, the fuzzy stuff is all wool, so that makes sense. And so it was really making it hard to get through uh, the heddle, but we did. Um, the ends, oh my goodness, the ends are so many different lengths. Um... I may trim that even before I start tying that off. Anyway, so I'm going to try to get this all hooked up to my back stick. One thing I'm going to do differently now, you see these little cardboard strips? I've always used them up at the top, but the instructional video from Ashford, because this is an Ashford loom, um, as I recall, the woman didn't tell us to use it on the on this back stick but or which one is the back i guess that's the back stick and this is the front stick she didn't say to use it back uh, here and so i always just use scrap yarn and whatever and i had a hard time getting that nice straight edge um on this end of my weave and i really do think it's because i'm supposed to be using these nice little sticks they're cardboard but i'm supposed to be using them down here too i always wondered why i had so many and over the years, since I've had this, some of them, they tend to um, break. I've taped this one back here. This one has broken once again, so it's kind of short. I have a bunch of short ones, so I may retape them, get them all long again, and use them on this end also. I really wish I had some that were still thin like that, but stiffer. Not made out of wood, but just something a little sturdier, maybe even plastic smooth plastic. Well, anyway, so I'll catch you up on this weave after I get it off um, off the, the dresser. <laughs> okay, here's a quick update on the weave. I'm now seated, and so I have it, um, I've tied it off on the bottom, and I've also put two of these sticks in. They do a really good job of, well, kind of, maybe I should be more attentive to making sure that's straight. <laughs> Um, okay, so this was a bit of a nightmare for a while because of this pink or purple. That's not purple. Mauve, maybe. Um, because, especially in this middle section, I because this was one strand, I really, and it's very thin, I thought I should double it. So I did double it, and um, it made it really thick, and this stuff loves to grab onto itself, and I couldn't get it through the heddle very well and it was all sticking together and kind of clumping up here and I had to I literally on every single um, pass I had to go through and shove down the yarn that was in the, the, um, the slots not the eyes um, I didn't do for whatever reason thank the Lord I didn't do doubles on these others just on this middle one and I thought, well, maybe that's part of the problem is there's just too much yarn. So I snipped off. <laughs> I did. I cut off. I left one in each eye and, uh, and one in each slot. But I cut off 
um, one for each one. And, I, I, and then when I, I just rolled it down, which means that the yarn has to pass through the heddle to roll down to the bottom, and it actually all passed through. I didn't even notice it, but it came through. So I'm going to keep plugging away and hoping that this works. It's a lot of work so far to have to just cut this off the loom and call myself done. That would be tragical. So we shall see. But that's an update on this. You can see. Ugh. Okay. But we're not going to look at that. We're going to look at the finished stuff down here. We'll see how it looks. Thanks, guys. So here is the final end of this terrible project. <laughs> um, of this weave. Um, I went on my Facebook group for rigid heddle weavers and I asked them, I said, I have this weave that I really think is kind of ugly. Maybe it's not ugly. I don't know. It's hard to say at this point. Um, but mostly it was very frustrating and extremely time consuming. And um, should I cut it off the loom or should I keep going? And a lot of people said to keep going. But one girl said, you know, cut it off. Life is short. If you think it's ugly and it's wasting your time, you've learned your lesson, but don't keep sinking your time into something that you don't think is going to work. And I was like, you know, she's probably right. I was hoping it would be long enough once I cut it off to um, have it be a shawl so I could donate it to the prayer shawl ministry here locally because they they really do like all kinds of shawls um, in all, you know, and it's really not that, that bad. Um and uh, But then when I measured it, it's only 44 inches long total with this uh, fringe, so it's not long enough. The best thing it could be would be a table runner, and I might use it, um, or uh, like the top of a dresser runner. I might use it for that over in the little building later on when I'm trying to spruce things up around there. But I'll fold it up and put it in a drawer. Um, mostly it's it's wool. It's scratchy wool, so you really don't want to wear it necessarily. Some people love wool. I'm, um, a lot of people don't like it for that purpose. But lessons learned. I A lot of people on my group are talking about Kelly Casanova as a really good online weaving instructor, and I've been listening to some of her videos this morning and realizing that I'm using um, yarn on my 7.5 uh, heddle that's too thick for it. I need to use thinner uh, yarn or wool, as they call it. They call all yarn wool in some places. Um, like sock weight yarn. Okay, so something lighter than a four weight. It needs to be more like a three weight. I'm going to give that a try and see if my weaving is more pleasant. All right, so there is, I just felt a really bad float on the back of this. Look at this. This comes from very, very, very bad tension. Uh, see, there's another big float. Yeah. The tension was awful on this. I've also discovered something I'm going to be doing. Um, it's a tensioning device that you make on your loom with dowel rods. I'm going to go buy some dowel rods and try to figure out how to do that too. And so I'll share that in another video. Thanks for sticking with me through this project. It wasn't too horrible. Mostly I learned a lot of good lessons. And I interacted with some online folks that were very helpful. See you later.